In this lesson, we're going to talk about both Chapter 7 and 8 of the International Mechanical Code. The reason I'm combining these lessons is because it all has to deal with combustion. The combustion air in Chapter 7 is the air coming into the furnace, how we're getting the air that's required for combustion to occur. Chapter 8 talks about the chimneys and the ventilation, that is the air leaving the furnace. It's great to have these together because they must be balanced. I must have a certain amount of air for combustion, and then the air has to be able to leave the building without mixing with the inside air. So starting with Chapter 7, we're talking about combustion air. As always, Chapter 7 starts off with a general scope. The general scope is Section 701. It talks about the circulation, crawl spaces, attic spaces. It talks about what's covered in this chapter. It also references to the International Fuel Gas Code because anything with gas-fired equipment must follow both International Mechanical Code and the National Fuel Gas Code or International Fuel Gas Code. In Connecticut, it is the National Fuel Gas Code. Seven, section 702 talks about the indoor air. In other words, when can we use indoor air from the combustion areas? It talks about unconfined spaces, section 202. And if you remember, chapter 2 had to deal with codes. Talks about openings, size of openings. Okay, minimum, according to section 708, has to be a minimum of one square inch per thousand BTUs per hour input rating. Okay, and shall be not less than 100 square inches. Section 703 talks about the use of outdoor areas combustion air. 704 talks about the combined use of indoor and outdoor air for a certain condition. Gives you the size of the openings, the ratio of openings for both vertical and horizontal. They make a difference because hot air rises, remember. Sometimes horizontal has wind direction, okay? Has indoor and outdoor spaces. 705 gives you the second condition, combined use of indoor and outdoor air for combustion. 705 specifically says this section shall apply only to the appliances located in unconfined spaces in buildings of unusually tight conditions. In other words, a lot of insulation, very energy efficient. 706 talks about forced combustion air supply. In other words, if I use a motor and a fan to push combustion air into an area. 707 talks about a direct connection. Let's say I put a vent directly onto the intake side of an oil burner. It's direct connections to combustion air. Seven oh eight talks about combustion air ducts. What can I use for my combustion ducts? They have to be of galvanized steel. They have to comply with Chapter Six of the Code. Have to have a minimum cross-sectional dimension of three inches. Have to terminate in unobstructed space, have to have free movement of air, okay? It can't be screened when terminating in an attic space. It cannot slope downwards toward the source of combustion air because we don't want condensation to build up. We don't want a downward slope where, where moisture goes outside and freezes. Section 709 talks about the opening obstructions. What can we put in there? Can we use levers? What type of louvers can we use? 710 talks about opening location and protection. We it refers back to Chapter 4 to out, where it talks about outdoor air intake openings. What do they have to be sealed with? How can we prevent animals from moving in? Birds, rats, and mice. Now, having talked about combustion air, let's talk about the outbound side of air. Chapter 8 is chimneys and vents. Specifically, again, we start off with the scope. Okay. 801.1 says this chapter shall govern the installation, maintenance, repair of factory-built chimneys, chimney liners, and vent connections. It do, re, does refer to the fuel gas code for gas-fired appliances. Oil-fired appliances, it also talks about in 801.2.1, refers to NFPA 31. Gives you ideas of masonry chimneys, positive flues, design of systems, okay, solid fuel appliances, it talks about abandoned inlet openings, and they have to be closed. It talks about positive pressure. Most chimneys will work on a negative pressure, a vacuum. And this section, Section 801, actually serves as some good definitions for the entire chapter.
801 continues talking about residential spaces around linings, um, multi-story prohibited. Then it goes into 802. 802 talks about vents. Vents, the different vent types. Type L is oil, talks about pellet vents, talks about installation of vents, talks about vent heights. Chapter section 803 talks about the connector. The connector is the piece of pipe that goes from the appliance to the chimney or vent. It is a little piece of connection. Okay, it talks about connector serving two or more appliances. Talks about what type and what type of sheet metal gauge you must use for the different connectors. Notice five and smaller is 26 gauge, larger than 16 inch diameter is number 16 gauge. The lower the gauge number, the thicker the metal, the stronger the vent will be. Talks about installation of vents. And again, refers to 803.10.1. You have tables here. System A, B, and C, and D. Different vent connectors, clearances. Table 0803 talks about clearances to combustibles. This is an area that is very definitely on your state license exam. Understand these tables, know how to use them. I will make sure you have some worksheet questions that go along with these. 804 talks about direct vent systems, mechanical draft. Mechanical draft means I am either pushing or pulling the flue gases in or out of the system. Talks about the termination of these. Be very careful of directing the exhaust away from the building. Make sure that the areas are not in an area that's going to be covered by snow. Section 805 talks about factory built chimneys. In other words, the chimney comes pre-assembled from the factory. Factory built fireplaces, the support of these, medium heat appliances, and decorative shrouds, things that make things look pretty. Section 806 completes our chapter 8 and talks about metal chimneys. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to complete the worksheets that are in this lesson. They're under the Assignments tab. I want you to go through and answer the discussion questions and realize, make sure you check back on the discussion questions because I'm going to post some follow-up questions to your answers. And then to, when we're all said, and when, I, to, when you're done with everything, take the quiz when it becomes available.